how to steer clear of the top 10 HIPAA violations, stay out of trouble, and not get fined. First of all, the biggest menacing challenge about HIPAA these days is this. Not knowing where it fits into an audit-proof compliance program. Or how it can seriously affect you. And while state and federal compliance rules differ, it's way beyond the scope of these top 10 HIPAA violations that I'll go over in just a minute. But first, let me tell you what a compliance program isn't. A compliance program is more than just having an old compliance manual in your office gathering dust. Simply having a compliance program or a book about compliance programs could substantially harm you more than you think. The problem with a flagrantly unkempt manual shows that you've got some knowledge of what you should be doing, but you've haphazardly chosen not to do it. It could be interpreted by authorities as knowingly and willfully violating several laws. So who cares about HIPAA? So what? And what's the big deal about it anyway? That's what I used to think, and that probably makes me just like you. But understand this one thing, as a clinic director, a clinic chiropractor, or a wellness coordinator, we're under the ubiquitous umbrella considered a covered entity. It's as bluntly as simple as that. The standards for privacy of individually identifiable health information is called the privacy rule and establishes a set of national standards for the protection of certain health information. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, also known as HHS, issued the privacy rule to implement the requirement of the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, referred to as HIPAA. The privacy rule standards address the use and disclosure of individuals' health information, called Protected Health Information, PHI for short. And this is used by organizations subject to the privacy rule called covered entities. In addition to accepted standards concerning individuals' privacy rights, it's important in order to understand and control how their health information is used. PHI is considered any information in a medical record that can be used to identify an individual or was created used or disclosed in the course of providing any healthcare service. Even as elementary as the information associated or linked to a scan tag and certainly inclusive of a person's lab tests, reasons for care or treatment. Quick question, or initials, emails or phone numbers considered PHI? Yes, because an individual's name is an identifier and initials are derived from the individual's name. Therefore, initials and any other way to contact, connect, or cross-reference them are considered identifiers under the privacy rule. Within HHS is the Office for Civil Rights, OCR. It has the responsibility for implementing and enforcing the privacy rule with respect to voluntary compliance activities and civil money penalties. The criminal penalties for HIPAA violations can be harsh and senselessly severe. But then again, all you really need to do is this, log and report six things concerning an incident with one, the name of the covered entity, two, whether it's a healthcare provider or a business associate, three, the number of individuals affected, four, the breach submission date, five, the type of breach, and six, the location of the breached information. That's all, it's easy, but not that simple. The federal fines for non-compliance, however, are based on the level of perceived negligence found within the organization at the time of the HIPAA violation. These fines for a first-tier violation can range from $100 to $50,000 per incident, with a maximum penalty of $1.5 million per year for each violation simply because the covered entity did not know or could not have reasonably known of the breach. So the bare minimum fine for a willful violation of HIPAA rules is $100 per record. Shockingly, the maximum criminal penalty for a fourth tier HIPAA violation by an individual is $50,000 per incident, up to 1.5 million. 
This means the covered entity acted with willful neglect and failed to make a timely correction. What's even worse, criminal violations that occur as a result of sluggard negligence can result in a prison term of up to 12 months. And it makes no difference whether or not we casually accept a beneficiary who participates in a government-sponsored program like Medicare. Medicare Benefit Policy Manual Chapter 15 covered medical and other health services, it states. The opt-out law does not define physician to include chiropractors. Therefore, we may not opt out of Medicare or the rules governing it. It would be great if there were no hackers. But how about lost devices? Are they ever returned intact? And what if every employee always followed every single rule? Unfortunately, this isn't quite the case. Every day, we come across a growing list of HIPAA violations, but more importantly, compliance issues. And more than anything else, what was done and what wasn't done about it. Tragically, most chiropractors blandly ignore the incident because they don't know what they don't know. Or those under their leadership attempt to cover it up then humoring themselves with righteous contempt and impunity. As healthcare providers who conduct certain healthcare transactions electronically, like it or not, we're a covered entity and responsible. We're responsible to protect an individual's medical records and PHI. In any honorable form or medium, such as electronic, on paper or verbal. A compliance program is a centralized process to promote honest, ethical behavior in the day-to-day -day chiropractic office operations. This ultimately allows us to identify, correct, and prevent illegal conduct. Because every clinic director, clinic chiropractor, and wellness coordinator needs to be well-trained and willingly comply with HIPAA policies. This is why it's vitally important that all chiropractors and wellness coordinators go over HIPAA rules when training and onboarding their team. Because you can't expect what you don't inspect. Here's the biggest and most dismissive issue. If you don't have a detailed HIPAA privacy or HIPAA security procedure currently in place, with up-to-date logs of all potential security breaches, then you're considered non-compliant if you're miserably luckless enough to be audited. This includes privacy of health information, security of electronic records, administrative simplification, and portability of records. Patient health information is any demographic information that can be used in any possible way to individually identify a patient. So starting off in 2019, I thought this would be a great time to talk about the everyday top 10 most common HIPAA violations and provide tips for avoiding them. The Office of Inspector General states, while compliance programs are not a novel idea, they are becoming increasingly popular because they show proof of positive steps towards promoting a high level of ethical and lawful individual and corporate conduct. If fraud or other breaches in confidentiality are uncovered, the Department of Justice and the OIG through the Office of Civil Rights will determine if reasonable efforts were made by management to avoid and detect any misbehavior that occurs within their operations. To stay off the OIG's radar, let's begin with the first five. One, stolen or missing devices. We often hear about stolen electronic gadgets, such as laptops, tablets, thumb drives, and smartphones. Even though this can occur simply because it's misplaced, the incident should be logged and reported. Either lost or stolen, people compound the problem by not encrypting and password protecting these devices. Encryption is technically not required by HIPAA, but it is considered a good way to have a valid get out of jail free card. Technically, encryption is considered addressable under HIPAA. The thing is, there's rarely a situation when a system shouldn't be encrypted. According to the Federal Register, 
Encryption and destruction are the only two methods for rendering protected health information unusable, unreadable, or indecipherable to unauthorized individuals, also known as secured. This makes them exempt from the obligations of notification to the Office of Civil Rights when a breach does occur. According to Susan McAndrew, OCR's Deputy Director of Health Information Privacy, she says, covered entities and business associates must understand one thing. Mobile device security is their obligation. Our message to these organizations is simple. Encryption is your best defense against these incidents. Number two, hacking. Data from the Wall of Shame, a database of breaches kept by the OCR, shows that hacking makes up 23% of HIPAA breaches in the form of an IT incident, theft, improper disposal, or unauthorized access and disclosure. When discovered, this can be in the form of missing desktop computers, laptops, electronic medical records, emails, phone numbers or addresses, all kept on paper or on thumb drives. It doesn't always have to be an, an elaborate scheme because hackers are often looking for the path of least resistance and theft can be done in many ways. Some popular methods are by exploiting a user profile with a weak password, resulting in the presence of malware, trojans, or a virus. Also, software exploits like the Heartbleed bug, discovered in 2014 exploiting the Open SSL library and the transport layer security protocol. There are a few easy ways to make sure your systems are less vulnerable to hacking. Update all passwords quarterly. Cracking weak passwords is one of the easiest ways to hack a system. Turn on software firewalls in your operating system. Install malware scanning software. Routinely update your security software. Number three, team member dishonesty. In the past few years, everything from vendors to volunteers have been stealing PHI, then using it for reasons not originally authorized, or simply team members accessing it out of curiosity. That too is a HIPAA violation. Whatever the reason, accessing files that you're not allowed to see is wrong. Using or selling PHI for personal gain is illegal, and you are subject to federal fines and prison time. Number four, improper disposal. Even something as simple as the photocopier and scanner could be the cause of the next HIPAA violation. Many multifunction photocopiers default to save copies on their hard drive. If you dispose of a copier or return it to a leasing company if leased, without first properly wiping the drive clean or removing it, you could have a HIPAA violation on your hands. Any information, either digital or paper, needs to be shredded or destroyed so that others cannot access it. There's a saying, put a nail in it. By putting a nail right through the middle of an old hard drive or thumb drive ensures it can't be recovered. Also, be sure to wipe all data from phones and mobile devices before exchanging them or upgrading with a newer model. Number five, third party disclosure. Improper disclosure of PHI to third parties finishes out part one of the top 10 HIPAA violations. If you want part two to discover more about unapproved release, encryption, insufficient training, loose records, and other loudmouth persons, reply with, I want six through 10 in the subject line. Lastly, most businesses have business associates and business associate subcontractors. And just like you, these third parties are equally responsible for protecting PHI. Understanding the common agency provision in the HIPAA omnibus ruling is important because it holds your business associates and their subcontractors to the same strict privacy and security compliance standards required of covered entities as you are. And as clinic director, clinic chiropractor, or wellness coordinator, you're ultimately responsible for them and what they do with the information they have access to. Does Office Depot, Alhambra Water, or UPS have compliance plans? Do we have them sign those required business associate agreements? 
If you don't have a business associate agreement in place, whether PHI is ever accessible or not, you have a potential HIPAA breach on your hands. I'm Dr. Meltz, Clinic Director at the Joint Renaissance Creek in Roseville, California.